Good morning, beautiful ladies. How are you doing? Honey, will you come turn this fan off? I think it's making a big shadow. Let me see. Hey, ladies. Good morning. Bob. Pastor Bob. Will you come turn the fan off, dear? It's making a shadow on the broadcast. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, good morning. Well, I'm back home. Back in Baytown. So happy to be home. We had church yesterday, and today is, I think it's Labor Day today. Yeah. So, um, what a joy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a little bit. Okay. Thank you. Bob always fixes it when it's cloudy, because sometimes my hairspray gets on it. Um, it's a beautiful day today. I hope all of you are going to have a wonderful holiday. But we don't quit prayer for anything. We don't quit prayer. You know, when Pastor Todd and Cindy and I and Pastor Bob were out on vacation, we found a church to go to because we just believe on Sunday you need to be in church, uh, no matter where you're at. And uh, so it was a pleasure to visit a church there in Florida. And so, you know, our living for God is not predicated on any other thing. We do that every day of the week. So what a pleasure. What an honor it is to pray with you every morning. What an honor it is to be with women that love the Lord so much that they show up on a holiday to pray. So I want to encourage you to just share the broadcast this morning. And we're going to pray for, for several different things today. We're going to pray for our nation. We're going to pray for our, our families. We're going to pray for our communities, our states. I want you to put your state in there. And just put your state in there as just uh, put your family's names and your state as just an act of faith. Uh, uh, that you are standing for your family, you're standing for your government, you're standing for your nation, you're standing for a global revival, a national revival. I am standing for a national revival in the United States of America. Not a, not, not a series of meetings, but a real transfiguration, a transfiguration of a nation, a nation that has said, I surrender to Jesus. I surrender my life. I, Jesus, you are my Lord and my master. Jesus, you are my Lord and my master. Ladies, I want to encourage you to just write that out, that today, Jesus, you are my Lord and my master. There is none like you. We love you, Lord. We adore you. We give you praise and glory and honor. There is none like you. Holy Spirit, have your way in our lives today. Let our lives today be an example of your love, be an example of your agape love. Let our lives today be submitted to you. Let our lives today be consecrated to you. Let our lives today be a walking epistle. Let us be a walking epistle. Let us, let us not only uh, radiate the love of God, but let us show the love of God. Let us live out the love of God. Uh, let us be walking, a walking Bible, a walking example of what your love does to a transformed heart. Don't let us ever get over getting saved. Uh, we were listening yesterday to Robert Morris um, at our church. We had a the series going on, The Blessed Life, and we hadn't done it in several years, and Pastor Todd said he felt like we should do it again, and I I just absolutely love this series. It was I think it's a newer one that he's kind of redone, but they on one of the on part of the the program yesterday or the series that we were playing for the church, uh, a pastor's wife asked Pastor Robert Morris's wife, "Why do you think your husband is so generous?" And I this just touched my heart so much. She said he never has gotten over getting saved. He never got over the fact that God saved him. And so he wanted to be so generous. And Lord, I just pray that we never get over. We never, it's never old news. The fact that we got saved, that we got filled with your spirit, that we were forgiven of our terrible lives and the mistakes we made. Don't let us ever forget it. Don't let us ever, don't let us ever get over it. Let us live lives that are so thankful for your goodness and for your mercy and for your love. Oh, my Lord, I am so thankful that you love me. I am so thankful you forgave me. I am so thankful that you gave me a chance to live eternally 
in heaven, God, that I won't go to hell, but that I'll also live an abundant life here on earth. And God, I want to be the most generous woman that walks the planet. I want to be the one of the most generous women, generous with my love, generous with my time, generous with my uh, forgiveness, generous with my money, generous with everything that you've given me, Lord, everything that you've given me, or actually it's yours, but you've allowed me to be a steward over my time and my money and my, my, my health, everything. I want to be generous. I want to be kind. I want to be full of love. I want to be what the love chapter is, Lord. I want, I want, I want the, your, your love to be large in me, your love to be large and patient and kind and wise. And God, love does doesn't mean that you just let people run over you. Love means that you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, but you are always kind. You can be strong and be kind. You can have morals and be kind. You can stand for something and be kind, but be resolute in what you believe. And so, Lord, I ask you that we just, we are literally walking epistles. We are walking, uh, we're, 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 walk, we're walking out the word. We're walking out your presence. We're walking out your love, that we are transfigured by your power, that your handmaidens are transfigured by your power. I don't know how many of you saw Lana, uh, uh, Lana Vowser's word, um, it is so us. It is part of, it is our mandate. And go, go look at her last word about the warrior women and arising and the mothers arising. And that is us, ladies. That is us. That's why we must be resolute. We must be resolute in calling other women to prayer. I want you to invite them in to our prayer services. Invite them in at 8 o'clock in the morning. Invite other women in to pray with us and say, listen, pray with us. God is doing something amazing in the mothers across America. Tomorrow morning is our first day of the 10 days of awe leading up to Rosh Hashanah. We're going to have Jessica, uh, Pastor Jessica Robbins with us in the morning. It's going to be a beautiful morning. I'm going to see if I can uh, uh, rustle up Pastor Todd and Cindy maybe for Wednesday morning uh, to pray with me on Wednesday morning. So, Lord, we just thank you, God, for the opportunity, for the opportunity to love you, for the opportunity to spend time in your presence, for the opportunity to, to worship you, God. There is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. And, God, we just, we adore you. We adore you. I pray, God, that righteousness will prevail in America. I pray, God, that you will give us wisdom. I pray for a supernatural impartation of wisdom to protect our country, to protect our cities, to protect our townships, to protect our democracy. Give these ladies wisdom, practical wisdom and spiritual wisdom practical wisdom, things that we can do. God, open our eyes to the truth. Open our eyes to, to insidious plans, to, to literally uh, disembark and completely annihilate this country ahead of its time. Give us, give us wisdom and give us wisdom on how to not only fight the enemy in prayer, but to do the things practically that we need to do to protect our country. We plead the blood of Jesus over our country, America. I do not believe that America's days are over. I believe that God has a remnant here and he wants to turn things around and give us an extended period of time as a nation, as a democracy, so that we can win more lost and see more saved by the power of the Holy Ghost. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to give us wisdom. I ask you, God, to give us resources to do what we need to do 
to save a nation. I ask you, God, to give us resources to get this nation saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. I ask you to raise up evangelists and prophets and apostles and teachers and pastors that are sold out to the kingdom of God. I ask you to raise up Christians all across this nation that will stand for righteousness, stand for holiness, stand for life, stand for truth, stand for what is right and true. I'm not bought out or sold out to anybody but Jesus. I want you to hear me right now. I am not sold out to any political party. I'm not sold out to any political pundit. I'm not sold out to any business. I'm not sold out to any entertainer. I'm not sold out to any, uh, to any educational system. I'm sold out to Jesus Christ. I'm sold out to Jesus Christ. He is my Lord. He is my King. And He is my Master. And I'm sold out to what the Bible says. And I'm sold out to the right righteousness and holiness of God's Word. Righteousness and holiness of God's Word. Do you know that the five, first, the five books, five, first books of the Bible are the Torah? That's why we have been grafted in. We have been grafted in. And I'm sold out to righteousness. I'm sold out to holiness. I'm sold out to Jesus Christ. I'm sold out to living and, and talking to the Holy Spirit every morning. I'm sold out to living a godly life. And when God tells me, Callie, you've sinned, I repent. I'm sold out to Jesus. I'm not sold out to my theology. I'm not sold out to my, my, my personal bloodline. Uh, listen, I'm proud that I'm a Texan and I'm proud that my family's been here, but that I'm not sold out. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Father, and I'm sold out to Jesus. And so, Lord, I just thank you that you're raising up women across this nation that are sold out to Jesus. We pray for the women in this nation that don't know Jesus, Lord. We ask you to reveal yourself to them. I pray for the women, Lord, that might be Jewish, that don't know you as Lord and Savior. I pray, God, that you would reveal yourself to them. Reveal yourself, Jesus, to them. I plead the blood over my Jewish brothers and sisters in this nation that you would reveal yourself to them. I pray, God, for my brothers and sisters in Christ that you would draw them nigh unto you, God. Let them be, every one of them be sold out to your kingdom. Don't let us be sold out to money. Don't let us be sold out to entertainment. Don't let us be sold out to popularity. Don't let us be sold out to building a kingdom or even building a business. There's nothing wrong with building the business, building a business. But if building your business is, is more important than your God, then you've got the wrong thing in the wrong place. You've got something good in the wrong place. When there's something great that needs to be in the place, that place, and that's called Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There's nothing wrong with building a ministry if God's called you to build a ministry, but it cannot be your number one. Uh, it can't be you, who you love. It can't be your Lord. Your Lord has to be Jesus. It can't be number one. Jesus has to be number one. That is the only, uh, the, there's a throne in my heart and only Jesus can be, can be, it can't be my, it can't be our seven kids that me and Pastor Bob have. It can't be our, our grandchildren that we love so much. They can't be on the throne of our heart. It can't be our church as much as we love our church. It can't be on the throne of our heart. The only thing that can be on the throne of my heart is Jesus. The only thing that can be on the throne of my heart is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I love you, Lord. You are my King. You are my Master. I, I dedicate myself afresh to you today. I dedicate my life to you afresh to you today. I dedicate my dreams and my hopes and my desires all over to you today. I rededicate myself to you today, Lord. I, I surrender my children, mine and Pastor Bob's children, all seven of them. We surrender them into your hands. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. We just ask you to just... Just work in their lives beyond anything we could even imagine. We surrender our grandchildren to you, Lord. We surrender them, Lord. 
I plead the blood of Jesus over all my grandchildren. I plead the blood of Jesus over Rachel and her baby that's about to be born. I plead the blood of Jesus over Sarah and Ryan and little Ryan. We plead the blood of Jesus over Lana and her babies. We plead the blood of Jesus over Jake and April and, and Violet. We plead the blood of Jesus over Lauren and Dorteo and their babies. We plead the blood of Jesus over Wes and Amanda and their babies. We plead the blood of Jesus over all of our children. We plead the blood of Jesus over Todd and Cindy and their children and grandchildren. We plead the blood of Jesus over Nita and Buddy and their children and grandchildren. We plead the blood of Jesus over all my biological children, all my spiritual children, all the churches that we're in covenant with. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for uh, your goodness and mercy that is extended to us. We walk in that goodness. It is your goodness and mercy that leads us to repentance. We repent today of all sin, of all unrighteousness, of all, of all areas where we haven't believed you. We repent of every spoken word that didn't line up with your will, purpose, and plan. We cancel every negative word in the name of Jesus. We cancel every negative uh, declaration over our families. We declare that our families are strong. We declare that our families are healed. We declare that our families are on fire for you. God. We declare that we are a sold out nation to Christ. That, um, that America is a Christian nation. We declare America a Christian nation. We plead the blood of Jesus over America. Today, me and several hundred women, ladies, say it with me. We plead the blood of Jesus over America. We declare that America is a Christian nation. We declare that America is a holy God filled nation. We declare that revival fires are burning, that the fire of God is burning across America, and revival fires are burning in our hearts, in our homes, in our families, in our churches, in our cities, in our townships, in our counties, in our states. We declare that revival is pouring across this nation like a mighty, mighty wind. It is blowing like the wind that blew on the day of Pentecost. It is blowing across this nation. We declare that our sons and daughters are on fire for God. We declare that our sons and daughters are living for God. We declare that they're sold out to the kingdom and the purpose of God. We declare they are sold out. There is none like them. There is none like you, Lord. And there, our children are sold out to your purposes. God, lead them. Lead them and God guide them. Speak to them in the middle of the night. Speak to them in the morning time. Speak to them, Lord. Don't let anything keep them from serving you, Lord. We plead the blood of Jesus over our children and grandchildren. God is healing somebody by the name of Hannah today. Hannah, you are being healed. I want to hear from you. Uh, maybe you're connected to someone that's on this broadcast. Hannah, arise in the name of Jesus and be healed. Arise in the name of Jesus and be healed. And I see the glory of the Lord. Uh, the Lord is standing over your bed and I see the glory of the Lord descending on your body. Arise and be healed, Hannah. Arise and be healed. Arise and be healed. Arise and be healed. God is also healing somebody by the name of Joseph today. Joseph, maybe you call him Joey uh, or Joe, but Joseph, I think Joseph is his, his legal name. God is healing Joseph today. Arise and be healed, Joseph. Arise and be healed, Joseph. Arise and be healed. Somebody by the name of Millie. Millie, God is healing Millie today. Maybe that is a nickname. I'm not sure, but I think that might be a nickname. And Lord, I thank you for healing Millie today. That is an unusual name. I, Millie, God is healing Millie today. Arise and be healed, Millie. 
Arise, I pray for everyone that's sick with COVID, that you would arise. Anyone that is sick, that is connected to anyone on this broadcast, I want you to just write their names in the broadcast. Those that are praying with me are going to call out their names. And I call out every name that's written on this broadcast that's sick with COVID, that they would be healed in Jesus' name right now by the power and the blood of Jesus. Everyone that's sick with heart disease, write it out, would be healed in the name of Jesus by the power and the blood of Jesus. Everyone that's sick with diabetes, any kind of uh, uh, immune disease or disorder would be healed in the name of Jesus. We thank you for miracles today. 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 E ondria, sanda de naramo kondria, si, he oro romondria, sadria hai, he kaya na da naramo hondria, si, onda de naramo sandria mo kondria. I see a pastor's wife that is on here that is uh, really, really, really discouraged. Um, you're emotionally and physically worn out, and uh, I just want you to raise your hands. And the glory of the Lord is about to hit you. And God is going to heal you, and he is going to restore you, and he is going to strengthen you. The glory of the Lord is about to, to hit you right now. Just raise your hands and be healed. God is healing you. God is strengthening you. Supernatural strength is coming from the Father. God's going to strengthen your husband. And he's going to give you wisdom on how to uh, handle the things that are before you. You felt overwhelmed and you felt undermanned. And uh, it's just been a, it's been a rough season. But God, is he's, he's already showed up. He showed up. He showed up. He's already been there. He showed up today. You're going to feel the manifestation today. And God's going to give you wisdom. Anyone that needs strength for the journey, raise your hands. And God is giving strength for the journey today. Strength for the journey. Strength for the journey. I just thank you, Lord, for 175 women. I, ladies, I want to encourage you. I know it's a holiday, but I want to encourage you to share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. I'm going to pray and prophesy over several uh, after Pastor Bob uh, comes with communion. So he's going to step in here and do communion. All right, get your um, communion emblems. I was reading this morning. Um, right now I'm focusing on the commandment to love and what all that means and living and abiding in the love of God. And I was brought back to that scripture in John 13, which um, Jesus is fixing to do the, he is doing the Passover with his disciples, which, you know, where's where we get communion from. So it says that it was just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew the time that had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world. He now showed them the full extent of his love. And then it talks about Simon, the devil, uh, prompting Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray Jesus. And Jesus says, knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. And then he shows them a servanthood example. But his whole life was an example of servanthood. And his whole life was an example of love lived out. Yes. And uh, he said... I'm giving you another command to, to love as I have loved you. And then, as we know, there's the love chapter, that, and then there's Galatians 5 that talks about the fruits of the Spirit and what love looks like and how, how we're to do that. But Jesus said in uh, John 15 that we were to abide in his love and remain there. Uh, and then we would fulfill his commandments and we'll bring him pleasure. So... I just, I just like the fact that it said, having um, 
knowing that it was his time to go and leave this world, but he had been he had loved his own, and he was going to show them the full extent of his love. And it wasn't just by serving them and washing their feet. It was by going and willingly dying on the cross. Yes. He went to the Garden of Gethsemane. They prayed. He agonized over the sins of the world being put upon him. And then he was crucified, all because of his great love for his children. So we just thank you, Lord, this morning. Yes, Lord. <clears throat> that we, uh, you are our example of what love is and what love does. Love is serving, love is sacrificing, love is giving. And, that, and love is big, because you're big. And Lord, we just thank you that we're going to learn to obey you by loving, being patient, kind, yes. serving, giving, yes. humble, uh, unselfish, yes. generous, uh, overlooking others' faults, all yes. the things that love does. And consider the truth more important than uh, everyone's always concerning about everyone's feelings. Jesus would speak the truth in love, but he would speak the truth. So, Lord, we just thank you this morning for your body broken for us, beaten, bloodied, torn open, that we might receive healing. So we receive it. We declare this is your covenant. We believe it. We believe that we are healed by your body and by your blood. We thank you for the blood that washes us and cleanses us today. We believe and declare according to your blood and your body, we are forgiven and made right with God. Join heirs with Jesus Christ, sons and daughters of God. We have become a part of the family. We were aliens, and now because of your blood, we've been brought near. Yes. And we sit at the table with our Heavenly Father today in heavenly places. And one day we're going to sit with you, uh, and we're going to be with you completely, not just partially. We're going to be all sitting around your throne room, worshiping and honoring you. We thank you, Jesus, for this great hope and future of not just this moment, but of in the future. We thank you for what you're doing today, that today is just another day that leads to eternity in you. And we thank you for that, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to pray over these beautiful women. I want to encourage you. Um, to share the broadcast, I'm going to prophesy over a few of you this morning. Lord, I just thank you. I thank you, Lord, for each one of these ladies. Pray for Lori Bridges today. Lord, I just thank you for Lori. Thank you for what you're doing in her life. I ask you, God, to just strengthen her and give her wisdom. Uh, Lori, I see God literally um, pouring on you uh, the gift of wisdom, the gift of wisdom. And you're going to be able to uh, make incredible decisions even in hard times even in times that could be challenging God is going to give you the wisdom to make incredible decisions that are going to position you and your family for blessing and I just declare the blessing of the Lord over you I pray for Jill Johnson Moore today Lord I just thank you for blessing Jill I thank you for giving her eyes to see and ears to hear uh, I see where you've been walking the path of path with Jesus, but it, there are times that you felt like you didn't know where to go. Like it was too cloudy and too, um, everything was too discombobulated. But uh, I see you stepping into a clear place. Uh, I see you stepping into a wide open field and I see you stepping into a place of great understanding. As hard as it was and as hard as it was to understand in the past, you're stepping into just the opposite. And so don't be fearful to make decisions. God's going to help you make decisions. Lord, I just thank you that you are with your, uh, your, your ladies. I pray for Esmeralda today. Lord, I just thank you for doing a, what, for the work of God that you're doing in her and for the, uh, the blessing of God that is over her and her husband. I pray, God, that, that your spirit will just flow over them and through them. I see a lighthouse on your, the light of God on your, on your actual physical house. And there will be many come there to be saved and healed and delivered. And out of that, literally, God is going to birth a church. But you are to be patient and not try to rush anything. Listen, when I, get, when I, when I was a young woman and I would get pregnant, uh, the baby had to be full term for it to be safe to deliver. 
And many times God speaks to us things that we are called to do. And if we, especially if you're like Pastor Callie's personality and you tend to be impatient, you'll try to start something ahead of its due time. And so Esmeralda, here's my word of the Lord to you. Walk in God's due time. Declare that you will do everything in due time. Just because you see it now and God's spoken, it doesn't mean you do it today. So start where God has you want to start. Enjoy the journey and let, let this thing come to full fruition. Full fruition. Um, full fruition, says the Lord. Full fruition. And God's going to do a mighty, mighty work through in and through you and your husband. Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing. I thank you that many are being healed and blessed. Healed and blessed. Healed and blessed. I pray for children. Tina, I want to pray for yours and Willie's kids. Lord, I just pray for Tina and <clears throat> Willie's children. I thank you for revival in their children. This is the year for revival in their children. This is the time. This is the, this is the time of the children. And so I declare revival in your children. I declare a complete change by the power of the Holy Ghost that's so powerful and lasts forever. Not just, not a short time, but forever. I, I, I call forth complete revival and, and transfiguration in your children. And I pray for all the ladies' children that are represented that all of your children will be completely on fire for God. We're praying for families. I pray for you, Cherith. I pray for the blessing of God over you and your babies and your family. I declare the blessing of God over you. I pray the blessing of God over you, Brenda, and your children and grandchildren. I plead the blood of Jesus over every woman that is here today, over every woman, every pastor, every woman that's here today in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. There is none like you. Listen, God is turning our children around. God is turning the lives of our children around. He is bringing them into full fruition, into their calling, into their purpose. There will not be one left behind, says the Lord. Not one left behind. Not one left behind. And so, Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing. I pray for Deanie and Mike. Bless them in Alaska, Lord. Bless their church. Bless their children. Bless their grandchildren. We plead the blood of Jesus over every one of them. We plead the blood of Jesus over every one of them. I love you so much. I'm not going to hold you long today. This is uh, a holiday. I pray you have the best holiday that Jesus speaks to you all day long. In fact, I hear the voice of the Lord saying this is going to be a day where he's going to talk a lot. He's going to talk a lot to you today. So open your ears and listen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow.